Good morning, wrestling fans. Welcome to PWR Today. Good morning, Monday morning. It's June 29th, 2020. I'm the man they call Meathead. And, uh, you know, it's kind of a big weekend here at the PWR family. Uh, we're going to bring in Linda Kay in just a second. But uh, yesterday was Calalicious, Cal Hero's 18th birthday. He mm-hmm. is a man, and he's got a whole head of hair. I remember rocking that hair in the 80s. And today, make sure you're reminding David Hero that he is older than the man they call Meathead by, I think it's 26 days Linda, something like that, about 26 days that he has a number higher than I do. Good morning, Linda. How you doing? Good morning. It is just a celebration and plethora of hero birthdays, which is great for with our show and with the super friends. So Hashtag celebrations, hero come on. Oh, absolutely. Yep, I'm pretty happy. I'm pretty stoked about mine because it'll also mark the return of Major League Baseball. So Yes, uh, that is opening day on July 24th. It is opening huh? day. Otherwise known as White Castle Day around these parts because uh, the man they call Meathead makes a real quick trip down to uh, K-Town, you know, Kenosha, and uh, mm-hmm. gets himself a, a case of Cravers. Highway oh. 50. Oh, yeah. Oh, I get lost. I mean, unfortunately, <laughs> I don't think the lobby is open and the drive through is the only way, but I'm getting a Cavers, or Cravers case. Yeah. <laughs> man, it's nothing like <clears throat> it is nothing compared to the ones that are in the store when you get them from the freezer. So, yeah. Ah, uh, yes. I've had those. We too. are about 26 days away from White Castle Day. So, instead of talking about me eating, me stuffing my face and the Heroes Weekends, let's talk about a little wrestling. Hey, folks, don't forget also uh, subscribe and like for us, you know. Uh, YouTube, Facebook, uh, Stitcher, Spotify, uh, Sprecher Beer, whatever they're called, you know, all those uh, pod streaming, you know, uh, streaming apps that you're using. Make sure you give us a like and a, uh, a subscribe so that way you can figure out when new content is coming. But, Linda, let's let's talk a little wrestling. Uh, SmackDown on Friday night was uh, a pretty deep edition of uh, Undertaker tribute, uh, right. if you will. Your thoughts on how much they spent on The Undertaker through Smacked, especially during the COVID era, which didn't hurt them. And um, uh, I don't want to go too deep into it, but we did see a wrestler there that I didn't think was going to be on TV again. Do tell. Uh, Matt Riddle. Riddle. Um, yeah, I figured uh, yours. Now, granted, yeah. I believe that it's pre-recorded, and that's fine. It's dandy, but uh, WWE has not addressed it one bit. Right. Yeah, I don't know if um, continuing the Undertaker tribute kind of helps glaze over um, any of that um, negativity, any of the, you know, craziness with um, Matt Riddle and some of the others involved. But, um, yeah, the Undertaker tribute, um, it was nice. I mean, you know, it started out with all the superstars chanting, thank you, Taker. um, And then we already knew we were going to get a replay of the Boneyard match. um, No 73 Pintos in there at all. (laughs) <laughs> but um yeah you know that's one of the matches that you can always watch it's kind of like when a you know cert- where certain movies are on and it's like no matter how many times you've seen it you're, you're just gonna watch it um so of course watch the boneyard match again and throughout the episode you know, the superstar tributes um stuff we've seen already but you know if they maybe there was other stuff filmed that was supposed to originally air but given um some questionable topics maybe with some of the superstars um they decided to pretty much make half of the episode uh, a continued tribute given the you know promos throughout the entire episode but um but no it was cool and and then you know having it kind of roll over into uh king corbin coming out and you know talking some trash about the undertaker um you know brought some current light i guess to the situation um and surprisingly Jeff Hardy coming to defend Taker, um, which I was like, wait, so is this taking away from the Jeff Hardy Seamus debacle? I kind of was hoping that, but then I was like, wait a minute, next week's supposed to be the toast to Jeff Hardy. So um, yeah, I don't wasn't know. Wasn't that Seamus supposed to happen this week too? Yeah. Yeah, I thought so. So I don't know. I was thinking maybe there was a COVID thing, maybe questionable questionable I stuff with know. Seamus, but um, but yeah. So the the saga continues um, into this week with. Um, Jeff and Seamus. So we'll see about that. But um, one thing I want to say that's good um, for team a long time um, was the women's um, fatal four way that um, involved three women on my draft team. So Mm -hmm. I had a good shot at one of these ladies um, going on to um, face for the um, title at Extreme Rules. So um, it did happen with um, 
with Nikki Cross winning that um, that match to get a title shot uh, against Sasha Banks at Extreme Rules. So I'm, I'm pretty, I mean, sorry, at against Bailey. So I'm yeah. pretty stoked for that. No, Sasha Banks will be winning the Raw Women's Championship. Unfortunately, you know, against, uh, you know, Asuka. Asuka, my champion. But I've been trying to make some trades in the background. I was thinking about picking up Sasha Banks, but knowing that she might drop it eventually, I think we'll just leave that be. Okay. Um, you know, the reason I think the Jeff Hardy Sheamus thing has been moved around a little bit, Fox, again, I, I dropped this one before. Oh, They're a little yeah. pissed about the piss. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Pissed about the piss. Yeah. Again, <laughs> check your diet, man. It was way too yellow. Way too yellow. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, you had some questions for me before we got on the air tonight. Excuse me, this morning about the Braun Strowman and Bray Wyatt. Uh, match and the fact that extreme rules now has a what's it called again the horror show the horror show yeah what does that mean i mean unless i missed something it just all of a sudden had that tagline and are we getting was, a cinematic match between Strowman and bray wyatt because now it's a wyatt swamp fight yeah that's going to be my assumption that's going to be the big cinematic match of the evening one if not more um but yeah, I mean, as far as the logo too, nothing's really been added to make it look scary quite yet. Um, yeah, I was just kind of thinking like, you know, kind of like what we've been talking about like last week about how um, NXT the next or this week and next week is now suddenly the Great American Bash to kind of, you know. Ironically. Against, yeah, yeah, it's against Spider Fest the next two weeks. And then um, last week on Prime Time, Damien brought up Halloween Havoc. I'm like, well, that could have been something for hell in a cell halloween havoc or you know i don't know some type of tie-in with that but in july sure. kind of crazy I, mean, I know um you know you guys um you and matthew had talked about um stadium stampede and sturges and i was thinking about bash at the beach and i'm like bash at the beach would have been something maybe well maybe there would have been a beach but just something more relating or like you said with stadium stampede to the, the seasons you know so yeah I'm just kind of waiting to see how it will be explained with the horror show. I mean, I, I'm a huge fan of horror movies, so um, mm. anything with horror, I, I'll be quite glued into. Yeah, you know, and I enjoyed the cinematic match. Again, the Taker-AJ Styles match kind of set the the bar, the tone. Um, right. uh, unfortunately, there's really nowhere to go. I mean, you could go up, but are they going to really? I don't think they will. Now, granted, I loved the Bray Wyatt and John Cena match at WrestleMania. I actually loved it. I thought it was fun and it was weird. That's mm -hmm. why I loved it because it was just we didn't expect that. I didn't expect it, little, it at all. Yeah, and it was a little different from the night before. So, um, meaning the Taker AJ Styles match. But mm -hmm. I mean, are we going to get like a similar House of? We already had the House of Horrors match that was yeah. So, but. Know. This time it'll be Bray Wyatt. You said the swamp match. But. Yeah, and Bray Wyatt's looking a little bit more Bray Wyatt instead of the Fiend this time. So I mean, right. I really do like it. I, I, I mean, I don't think he's undoing his dreads for it. I don't think he'll put his <laughs> hair back to Bray Wyatt. I think he might do a little something different. You know, because right. can you imagine the work that he would have to put in? Yeah, that'd be too much. Um, so we also, you know, you. Spoke about team long time, you know. You spoke about the. I spoke about the team. Uh, we didn't get this update out after uh, Backlash came out. Um, I know it's been announced on the PWR 360 Twitter handle. Uh, let's go over to totals again, real quick. Uh, Man, they call me at 735. Andrew Baydala 520. David Hero 500. You and Damian tied at, uh, in last at 485. <clears throat> the reason the points look a little off, you know, whenever I send these points out, they're unofficial. The word has it that a trade hit was going to happen. It did happen. David Hero and myself have made a trade. Have you heard about this? Uh, I heard a rumor, but do tell. I need All to right. know. So I have traded Jinder Mahal. Mm. Jinder Mahal hasn't won me any points. And to be honest, you know, Jinder Mahal was the long play, you know, thinking that I might get something fall, winter, you know, early spring, end of the year. Mm -hmm. I didn't mm -hmm. expect anything from him. Uh, Dave has traded Kevin Owens. Kevin Owens is gone. So it seems uneven in a trade, doesn't it? You know, well, I got somebody I thought, that's active. Right. Well, I thought Jinder Mahal, isn't he injured again? He is injured. You okay. lead right into that. I get Kevin Owens. Dave gets Jinder Mahal. Dave will take a minus 25 to drop Jinder Mahal. And ladies and gentlemen, 
David Hero has picked up Carrying Cross. Ah, that's a big pickup. I huh. could have done it, but like I said, you know, it's kind of hard to focus on that stuff when you're in the lead. So right, and you I don't want to the... be taking points away, being the top dog right now. Yeah, <laughs> so I I missed out on the opportunity to possibly drop gender and get Carrying. However, David Hero now has Carrying Cross. Uh, Karrion Cross is going to be an NXT champion before WrestleMania. Mm. That's yeah, just my thought. Yeah, I can see that as well. Wow. All right. And, and me being you know, a little more newer in the actual PWR fantasy draft, I'm seeing how this is working. So by chance, you know, in case uh, I need to make some type of trades throughout this season, we, we shall see. But all right. That's well, let's let's talk about your teams. Zelina Vega, New Day, Alistair Black, Brody Lee, Bliss and Cross, Tommaso Ciampa, Matt Hardy, Miz and Morrison, Lacey Evans. You know, uh-huh. so you never wish for anybody to get hurt, but let's say a Lacey Evans gets hurt. Or, uh-huh. uh, you know, an Alistair Black is down with injury. Technically, you could drop New Day right now if you wanted to. Ah, uh, I, I know. I don't think so. But you're not going to. Why would you yeah. drop your number two overall pick? And the tag team champs. And the tag team champs. Right. I mean, you wouldn't lose the belt dropping points. You know, the points for losing the belts when they do eventually lose them at some point. So uh, I know you're, no, you're going to hold on to it. Yeah. You're you know, and, you know, I, if, if I don't, you know, pan well with the championships right now, with the holders, I should say, I mean, I think my, my team, you know, they're, they're great as far as at least making appearances. <laughs> <laughs> um, the exception of Tommaso right now. I mean, after that loss to Karen Cross in your house, we haven't seen him. So I got to think about that. Now, I also have been working with Andrew Baydala. Um, Andrew has two competitors on his list that are injured, and he could drop at any point. He has Charlotte, his number one overall pick, and he has Edge. Right. Charlotte, and that's kind of what, what I want to lead to. Charlotte is said to be out close to the Rumble. Oh. That's a huge blow to the women's division. A huge blow. Because, I mean, while her stock was starting to fall a little bit from the bouncing around and being the NXT champion, Charlotte is still mm-hmm. main event. Whenever right. they put her in the right match, the right place, right time, that is money. So, she is the we'll, yeah, we'll have to see what Drew does on that one. Uh, he still has Shayna Baszler, Chris Jericho, Young Bucks, Adam Cole, AJ Styles, Brock Lesnar, SCU, and Edge. So if he wanted oh. to take a minus 50, you know, 50 hit, he could pick up two more talents, really. Right. Well, and, and seeing Edge with that great promo on Raw last week, it's, I mean, I don't know the extent of his injury, if they said how long he would be out. Mm-hmm. But then again, we don't know how often he would even be on as well, if even if he wasn't hurt. But, but yeah. But, yeah, so, right. yeah let, let's talk more Raw side now of uh, Extreme Rules, which is coming up in just a couple weeks. But uh, the main event's already been announced from the Raw side. It's going to be Drew McIntyre and Dolph Ziggler, who... They got traded. Dolph Ziggler came along with Bobby Roode. Where's Bobby? I mean, yeah, he got traded along with him, but uh, where is he? Well, I mean, Dolph did say my, me and my tag team partner, Bobby Roode, or Robert Roode, are now on Raw, but he wasn't even there. So, right. <laughs> And now just Dolph well, Ziggler is involved with this championship match that was just kind of... I mean, granted, I know him and um, Drew McIntyre have history, but yes. it's just kind of putting it so quickly. See, I mean, again, I get some stars can't be there due to COVID yeah, and whatnot, yeah. But, but yeah, yeah. I really think that WWE painted themselves into a corner at WrestleMania, and I know that their plans are usually in stone at some point. They've really painted themselves into a corner having these big-bodied champions because you got Drew McIntyre on the Raw side. you got Braun Strowman on the other. Who are they going to work with in uh-huh. such a depleted roster on each side? Who are they going to work with? If you had a champion a little bit smaller, and I'm not saying I want this, but a champion a little bit smaller, like a Seth Rollins or a Dolph Ziggler or, you know, Daniel maybe, Bryan. What, say it again, I'm sorry. Da- uh, Daniel Bryan. Or Daniel Bryan. Somebody a little bit smaller that can work with anybody up and down the roster and then make the big guy chase the smaller champion as a formal, you know, opponent. They have really are stuck, honestly, for the next three, four months until they can get more talent to the shows. Hopefully within three to four months. <laughs> well, hopefully. I mean, again, you know, who's to say? You know, this is the COVID era, the attitude era, the, you know, aggression era, the COVID era. Uh-huh. Um, we're, we're, uh, we're in a world of pain right here. 
So uh, I wanted to ask you this real quick, too. I know we're jumping all over the place here, but the, the Undertaker-AJ Styles Boneyard match, have you seen They Live? Yes, absolutely. Do you feel that they borrowed a little bit from that fight between Roddy Piper and Keith David? You know what? I never thought about that comparison. Huh. I watched it's it again. It's been a while since I've again. seen They Live. I was going to say, I got to watch it again now. Well, well it was the talking. It. Come on, AJ. Come on, boy. Come on, son. Yeah. What's my name? Just yeah. go ahead. Get in there. Yeah. Put on the, put on the glasses. Come on, man. Just put on the glasses. Or they borrow it from Timmy and Jimmy. Put on the hat. Just put the hat on. <laughs> I I don't know. I mean, we that match was, was ever since WrestleMania, and I never thought to kind of put that together. Or, or really, you're the first person to bring that to light. On um, so now I got to dig up my. DVD that I got once um, at an employee Christmas party. <laughs> we had to um, do Secret Santa, and I had to each person had to say um, or put in three different things, and the gift yeah. had to be like fifteen to twenty dollars, like whatever it was. Sure. And my three things were uh, rock and roll or metal. I just put rock and roll just to be, you know, you know, pretty vague. Um, mm-hmm. Horror movies and wrestling. So that kind of engulfed everything in a way, there you go. right? Yeah. I mean, yeah, I, you don't know this, and the people listening don't know this. Before I get on the air in the morning, whenever I'm talking to whoever, uh, I start up my title playlist. I have title, T-I-D-A-L, and uh, the first song on the playlist right now is uh, Wolf Totem by The Who. That just gets me going, dum, 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 dum. Love The Who. Can't understand what they're saying. Thank God they got some <laughs> English singers to go along with it, but absolutely love it. Um <laughs> All over the board here today. I'm so happy to be talking to you in the morning, Linda. Uh, you know, right. we had talked before wondering, what are we going to talk about? It's Monday morning. We didn't have the news-heavy weekend like we had last weekend. Uh-huh. And, you know, again, fantastic stuff. I'm really happy to get this in. And again, folks, uh, we said it at the beginning. I want to say this again. Make sure you're hitting up at David Hero. Let him know that he's older than the man they call me dead for the next 28 days. So, Happy birthday, Dave. Happy birthday, Dave. Dave, I love you. You're my hero. I remember meeting Dave, uh, I want to say it was maybe 97, 98. I forgot what year it was. But uh, anytime he'd call the you know the bar I was at or anytime I'd see him, my hero. You're my hero. My favorite hero. You know, the Foo Fighters are just coming out, too. So yeah. Dave has always been my hero. So happy birthday, Dave. Um, happy birthday, Cal. I remember yes. Dave telling me, dude, I just had a kid. I, I remember that because that was only 18 years ago. I remember being, it was at Summerfest. Matter of fact, too, I remember that because, you know, we should have had Summerfest this week. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I was just saying to Dave, I was like, I think I met you right before Cal was born. It's, it, it's like, wow. Yeah. That was over 18 years ago. Yeah. So happy birthday, Cal Hero, as well. What a bright future Cal has. Sure, and... Just get a haircut. That's all. That's all. <laughs> I'm asking. Get a haircut. It looks great, Cal. <laughs> Cal, that hair can't be easy to manage, man. I'm telling you, as a person who's had that head of hair before, get a haircut. It'll change your life. <laughs> Folks, uh, make sure you're giving us that like and subscribe every time you're hitting us up on wherever you're listening to, uh, the Facebooks and the YouTubes and the Apple and the Stitcher and the Spotify and Fight TV. Don't forget our friends over at Fight TV. Uh, you know, yesterday on Sundays now, I've been doing this a while Linda, but uh, my collar and elbow brand T-shirt from Shad, the um, heavyweight hero. I, I seem to want to wear that on Sundays because, you know, I was wearing it on Father's Day and I seem to want to wear it every Sunday because I feel like maybe I'm a better dad for wearing that shirt. Get over, get yourself a T-shirt. Use the uh, promo code. I think it's PWR360. Gets you uh, yeah. 10% off. PWR360. Yep, absolutely. All right. So for Linda K, I'm the man they call me dead. Thanks for stopping by. So long, everyone.